Hey guys, welcome to the LA Auto Show, and I've got a special car and a special guest here. This is Motoman. Hello, Motoman. Hello, Roman. Welcome to my hometown. Welcome to LA, as Motoman has said, and we are going to give you a walk around of the show, starting with this very special and very, very cool special car that was premiered only as LA could. It was premiered at the beach in Malibu, California, at some crazy estate. And what this is, is the Genesis X concept convertible. And really, it's the third car in a line from Genesis of concept cars, but you've already seen the general design take shape in a production car. Roman, show them that front of the car, the headlights on this. Yeah, how about you keep talking and I'll give them a nice so, wide view of it. Take a look at the way the light signature is on this car. Basically, the parallel lines that start at the dash to axle ratio here and then continue all the way around the car. And then it opens up to the shield grill we've come to see from all of the Genesis cars now. This actually has taken shape on the G90. So they've made this into production. And if you remember, what was it, three years ago at this point, they showed the first car in this line of X concept cars, which was a coupe version of this. So really the shape of the car, you guys have already seen this. It just had a hard top to it and it was black. Uh, then they came out with a fastback version, which you can see over there. We'll go over to that we'll one. Go over there. We'll walk over there. But I want to show in Rome, take a look at the inside of the car. Look at how they've done the tactile feel and some of the color and trim on this. Some unique stuff they've done here. Normally you see leather throughout the car. Here they've put actually some unique wool, which changes the tactile feel of the car. And I'd love to see some of the changing of the design here where it's not this whole concept you see in electric cars where we're trying to do this uh, recycled materials, which, you know, Roman and I will debate in another episode about that. <laughs> this just feels different. It has, it conveys luxury, but in a way that hasn't been done before. And, and you know, Motorman, you know how you know it's a concept? It's yeah. got the camera mirrors, which, oh, which are illegal in America. Totally illegal in the U.S., <laughs> but legal in parts of Europe and Asia. Uh, you and I both have had the opportunity to drive the Hyundai Ioniq 6. Yes. And you notice how the dashboard is on that car? Yeah, it's got the mirror. It, the mirrors that come up, but only in Korea it's got the mirrors on the side of the dashboard. In the U.S. car, it looks like the Batmobile on the inside. We'll show them when we get to that car. So I was going to say, there aren't a lot of electric convertibles, right? So basically what you have yeah. is Polestar unveiled a convertible. Yeah. Uh, and this. Yeah. That's it, in terms of electric. That's it. Yeah, I don't think there are any, I, I can't think of any other electric So here's a question, and this is yeah. me asking you to read the tea leaves. Yes. How many more convertibles do you see coming to the market, EV, and in how long? Yeah, I always wondered about that. You know, manufacturers are always talking about, you know, quote unquote white space, right? Where there's nobody at. Yep. And for now, this entire year, we've had nothing but SUVs and crossovers in the electric world, right? That's all it's been. That's what so, sells. So we're missing like a proper three-row. Of course, Rivian is a proper three-row. But yeah. I'm talking like Tahoe size, right? Yeah. There's all these segments that, you know, the trucks have been hot and the crossovers SUVs, but, you know, sports cars. So here's my theory. 911's coming. That, I was just going to say. Yeah. My theory is this. You're going to see an electrified 911. Yep. And then after that, you most likely will see the repl not replacement, but the 718 electric, which will spearhead the next generation of the mid-engine two-seat sports car Porsche. I think that's the first production convertible you and I are going to see. Right, Maybe we should throw it over to the audience, see what they think. Yeah, let, let What's going to be the first production convertible EV? It's got this fastback. It's pretty. So this is the second in the line yeah, of the X concept cars. And here they did something different. They changed the color from the first one. The first one was black. This is like an anthracite gray. But notice they kept that whole shape and ta not tactile feel, but the design of the color and trim. Look at the pattern on the door panels and the seats. It looks like something from like an a, a, a very fine British club, like Soho House in uh, in, in, the ce in central London. You know, that's a really good point you just brought up. Once upon a time, like the British car makers were leaders in design yes, they were. and in good taste, right? You think of Bentleys, you think of Aston Martin, but now these guys are killing it. You know what's amazing? And this is a theme that's going to come up throughout our entire episode and probably in many other discussions that Roman and I have. The, the, the winner in today's automotive industry, it's not so much the vehicle itself, it's the speed of execution. And Hyundai wants you going forward. Yeah, I know. And the, Hyundai, Hyundai Kia is, Group, yeah. they are the fastest at yeah. this point, and they execute well. And part of it, 
I would argue is the leadership. Like now the person that's running this company is Jose Munoz, who is the guy that literally comes from a military background and runs it like a military operation. And that's why you're seeing the speed of introductions. I completely agree. I was just talking with uh, Simon there, head designer for Hyundai, right? And yes. he's, he's just cranking out. And this is actually a good example. So next vehicle we're going to cover is- ID this. Buzz. It's the Volkswagen ID Buzz. And Motorman, do you remember how long ago it was that this actually rolled out? I'm going to say you had five just, you years. You had just graduated high school I at did, that yes, point. It was that long ago. <laughs> I mean, literally five years ago, maybe longer, they actually unveiled this. And here we are looking at the European version of this car. Not the yes. American, right? This is nope. a two-row. We're going to get the three-row. Uh, and this won't come to America until 2024. So before I, I share... I love it. I, I love the design. Yeah. But before I share my thoughts... You tell me your thoughts on this car. So, um, I, I'm in lust with it. I just think uh, it's so California, right? Yeah. I can see this like cruising up PCH1 in Santa Monica, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, with a bunch of hippies. <laughs> or a hippies bunch of really can't rich. can't afford this. Exactly, a bunch of really rich yeah. post hippies, yes. right? Neo hippies. Basically, people who work in the tech world that think they're hippies. <laughs> exactly, neo hippies, let's call yes, them. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's got the same. Right, chassis is that. Yeah. A little bit bigger battery, so we're dual motor, um, over 80 kilowatts. Uh, it'll have probably 250 miles of range. I love it, dude. I just love it. This is, so let's talk the facts first okay. before we get into my thoughts. The facts are the Volkswagen Group is really the first one that has executed against, let's build a roller skate. I'll, I'll walk around and I'll show it, yeah. Let's build a roller skate and then put different bodies on it. So they started with the ID3, which we can't show you here today because they don't sell them in the US. And that's basically a Golf fully electric. Then they put that same roller skate underneath the crossover, which is the ID4. The play and pause buttons yeah, are yeah, awesome. Yeah. I love the playfulness of that. And then this is the third in this EV offense from the well, Volkswagen brand, and not by just Volkswagen far the best. Group. Let's, let's, let's be honest. But no, they're, they're doing a good job of actually taking the benefit of EVs, meaning taking the platform and you could change the packaging to anything you want and you don't have to put all that extra money to redo the platform. You know what I love about this? Look, let me sit, let me sit behind the wheel here and look, yeah. at, look at this view out the front. I, I love the way that vans have this incredible... You've spent too much time in Boulder. <laughs> you, you are an old hippie, aren't you? I'm not an old hippie, but... You are I, an I, old I, hippie. I, 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 wait a minute, look how... I can't reach the front. Look how... That's got to be like get four, there. Feet, Check it out. four feet ahead of me. How far is that? Look how... Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, isn't that cool? Like, like when you're. It's definitely safer than the original bus, which <laughs> literally, if you got your legs were if your you got an accident, zone. you'd have no legs. Well, because your legs were behind the front wheels. Now let me show you the, the let me show you the downside. All right, let's I, see. You know, I love some of the execution. Like, look at the beautiful materials they've used on yeah. this. Granted, the UX look, is and, and real like controls for the. Oh, I like I like the Taycan. Um, the, the one big downside, the UX oh, on the no, no, terrible. Oh, terrible. They Especially need to the blow this the, up. The volume thing. Everything about it. This yeah, is I you know. can't fix this one. The one of the Mercedes, you can if you just add three knobs. Yeah. This one, they need to blow it up and start from scratch. Yeah, the they, second they, thing, they let's go that, outside the that. car. Let me show you this. Wrong. Actually, you go there and let me show you. Okay. So the beauty of the original bus was it was a marvel in packaging in the 60s. You could put how many people in a Samba bus? This, it's a good sized vehicle, you, but you don't get that much more storage than an ID4. And I don't understand why they I mean, really didn't take advantage of the five platform. Five people, right, in this one. Yeah, we'll, but, we'll get seven. But this is a van. You should be able to put probably yeah. seven to nine in this thing. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. And I don't know if it's just they weren't efficient in packaging the platform on the body, but there just isn't, you would think there'd be more room here. Yeah, you can tell it's designed for a third row, yeah. right? Uh, armrest, cup and, holders. And they've confirmed for the US that they're doing the third row? Yeah, it's, yeah. this is a European yeah. one. They're definitely doing the third this row. This is a neat trick where they actually have like a false floor here. You know why that is? So when you fold those seats forward, it's flat. It's flat. Yeah, yeah. And then you can do this yeah. and like put stuff back here. Imagine like groceries. But even with that, there's still not a, not as much space there as you would space. think would be here. Yeah. All right, let's go. Oh, you know, we got to say hello to someone real quick. Can we say a quick hello here? Derek Jenkins, Chief of Design for Lucid, used to be Chief of Design for Mazda North America, and mayata -san. This is Chief of Design for Mazda, like, this was his boss. Good to see you, sir. Watch your mic so we can hear him. Okay, I won't really hear mayata -san. so this is the, uh, the mic situation. Right, we, got, we only have two mics, all right, there you okay, go. Okay, so we'll do the mic. Yeah. I'm amateur operation. So this is the man behind, actually not just the Lucid, but you designed the ND 
Miata as well. well. Well, together with this guy. Together with this man here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's yeah. Right. So, and we, as we all know, Miata is always the answer. Is Miata yeah, is always, always the answer? Yeah. 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 Did you did you do the new Gravity as well? I did. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. So that Thank just you. was unveiled a couple days ago. Yeah. It was teased. Yes. Teased. Yeah. A healthy tease. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the reason why I the reason why I bring Derek here is he's yes he's lucid yes he worked. For Mazda for many years and did some great stuff under my Audison. Did you work with Franz, who's now a Tesla? I worked with Franz, Franz and my Volkswagen days. Okay, yeah, yeah. we worked on the first version Which is of this. What I was thing. getting here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, you're giving it away. You say, I'm an amateur, you're yeah, the amateur. You can tell we have all over recently. <laughs> so this guy is a major Volkswagen freak. He dailies the old version of one of these things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what do you think true. of this one? I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with it. Yeah. It's cool. You yeah. Like it. I'm, I'm going to get one. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you have it. I, I have to say, a couple of years ago, we got to drive the California. Yeah. And why, that they, is wh cool. why they never brought that yeah. in. That's the camper version, that's right? That's the T6. Yeah. 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 It's, T6. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. You have a Synchro? No, mine's, mine's a, 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 a Weekender with the pop top Eurovan, so T4 yeah. 2001. Yeah. So that was like the very end of that generation. So are, are you going to move? Are you going to get one of these? I think so. Yeah. I have to wait and see what the long wheelbase version, because they're bringing the long wheelbase, bigger battery pack, more performance. So I'm, I'm so as a Volkswagen aficionado, do do you think they should have more? space in this vehicle it's a little smaller than i would have hoped that's yeah. why i love the t6 right because the t6 is the evolution of, of the t4 and yeah. this feels like an in-betweener yeah. more euro european focused but it's still cool it's still a neat package you know okay. so all right so l let okay. me ask you let me ask you both a question madison yeah <laughs> come on over here so so um you have you walked the show yet uh yeah well, almost what what are the cars that you're most impressed with here in terms of design we just did the Genesis. Those were, yeah. in my opinion, just beautiful. The X. Yeah, it's hard to tell. What is yeah. it? I mean, I was I was definitely surprised by the new Prius. Uh, same oh, as me. I didn't see that coming. He was a Prius owner. He, 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 oh, he supposed to talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah, looks really nice. He had a lot of hair before he was. <laughs> That's how I commuted to Mazda. Yeah. That's what got me up and down the 405 in the carpool lane. Um, I just was surprised to see that they lowered the car, they widened the car. It's mm -hmm. A post is like a supercar, yeah. yeah. you know. So yeah, it's pretty pretty. Zero to sixty in six point five seconds. Yeah, I mean that's a. Uh, and it's got an A pillar like from a. It's like an Aventador A post. I was about to say yeah. a Budokan. Yeah, it's like you're crazy. sitting in a Budokan. You know, so, we're living in a brave new world. Yeah. When a new Prius can out accelerate, let's say, a twenty year old Porsche. Oh yeah, it would <laughs> like yeah, that's like what Ferraris were in the nineties. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. I like that Safari uh, of Porsche. Like that, that, that's epic. Yeah. yeah. He's a closet Porsche freak. Yeah. Can't yeah. escape that. Those are mine too. Okay. All right. There Do you go. Press on. Well, Gentlemen, my a okay, pleasure. Good Always you. good seeing good you, sir. See you. I'll see you at the end of January for your CX90. Good. All right. So that little, little. Yeah. Yeah, please wait. A, a, a cliffhanger for that. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Okay, thank gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's let's. Speaking of that, the Prius, let's head over there. Huh? That was a special okay. treat. That was a special treat. I mean, you know, Mazda has set some of the best designers loose right over the years. Absolutely. Franz, who I was talking about, is the chief of design of Tesla. He came from Mazda. I don't think it's any coincidence that the two heads of design at the Coke and Pepsi of EV came from the incubator, incubator that is Mazda. And that's because of the way Mayotte-san runs that studio. He's, he leans on California so much, most of the designs for the Mazdas you and I see today all came from California. And before we get to the Prius, let me ask you, I want to get your opinion on the crown. What, what do you think of the crown? This is kind of a... I'm going to get up there and I'll tell you. Yeah, it's kind of a weird animal, right? It's basically a sedan that they've turned into a crossover. So, you may not agree with me on this, but I actually like this. I like it I like light. this a lot. Yeah. And not from a design perspective, rather from the hybrid system. I think this is a wonderful solution going forward for electrified, not EV. So what they've done is they've taken the EV system, the hybrid system from the Tundra, and they've put it in this car. So it actually has torque. It actually has a real transmission, and it actually has some performance in a car that is the size of the Avalon. So really, there are, there's some good driving dynamics here. Yeah, people have criticized this car. Now that I've, this is my first time seeing it in person, I actually yeah. like it. Who, who drove the car for you? Uh, Tommy, I think, went, did the, oh, did the he's, crown. Oh, he's too young to understand this car. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. It's and not bad. I think the design is unique. 
I don't know if it'll sell. I think that's another question we turn around to the audience because everybody looks at this and they think, oh my God, it's the cross tour again. I, but me personally, I think the execution is better than the cross my, tour. My, my concern would be that, that they're going to maybe cannibalize Venza sales because in a way it, it's got a very Venza-like stance. Oh, I don't think so at all. You, don't think, you think that's more no, of a... No, like because the market, I think we've hit peak SUV. Okay. That's why this car exists because people are they're somewhat tired of SUVs. So that's why minivan sales are going up. Minivan sales went down to 100,000 units a year, which to give you an idea, Toyota alone sells 250,000 RAV4s a year. So that's why minivan market's so small, but now it's actually going up. And they figured, you know what? People are looking for a different solution, so why don't we give them something different? I like it, I'm with you. And I'm, I'm impressed that you're managing to stay upright and not trip. Yeah, this is my, Motor Man. This very, is my running background. Very good work. All right, look, I'm doing the moonwalk, see this, Roman? I'm doing the moonwalk. <laughs> I do the moonwalk. <laughs> hey, Scotty Scott. Reese, ladies and gentlemen, Scotty Reese. We're, we're in the middle of the video, so I don't, I don't mean to like oh, cut you okay. short, yeah. but we, we're, we're filming, so I'll, I'll, I'll catch up to you. Yes. I'll catch up. Uh, by the way, I love this. Uh, I love oh, the 40th, how could you not 40th love anniversary. This. Super cool. Yeah, it's cool. Can I just tell a quick, quick yeah, personal story? My brother has one of these, not this. This That's version. the 40th anniversary. He bought a 2018. He was in Portland, of course. You got to have one of these in Portland. Uh, bought a 2018. Got it in a little bit of a discount, but was hard to find. He still, in 2022, the dealer wants to pay him five grand more. Oh, than I know. Paid. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, they have had to make so much money on this car, and it's oh, still. Oh, it's all in paid demand. for. The tooling is paid for. And when do you think a new one's coming? I mean, you've got a well, five-speed. Next, year. next year's a 2024. I don't know if it's going to be produced in 2024, yeah. but I do believe we're going to see yeah. it in 2024. I think. I think. I think it's yeah. thirsty, and I think it's time for a new one. It is thirsty. They are going to do the 3.5. Uh, I, th I don't know if they're going to do the twin turbo, but they're going to do a 3.5 and a hybrid. All right, well, let's go look at the Prius. Do you want to show them this thing? Yeah, so this is our new concept that they just unveiled. Uh, it's kind of a subcompact or compact electric so vehicle. So this is a size smaller than the BZ4X? Yep, the BZ. And the idea, B well, it depends if you're Canada and Europe. Um, <laughs> size smaller, so think of this as like an NX size vehicle, Lexus NX size vehicle. And what they've done here is take the general, the, the design theme that they've done in to, uh, introduced in Toyotas over the past like two years, and they've put it in, I think, a more muscular stance. What I mean, I believe it's called the bullnose. I don't buy the uh, PR. Bullshit. You don't buy the PR, you're just, no. just gonna call it. I just, I just point, I try to point out something the camera doesn't see and then let you decide what you think about it. And then let's take a look at the theme, let's pick up the theme from the Genesis. Again, the tactile feel is all different here. So instead of doing the wool, they did the recycled materials right. in this thing. Yep. But the idea is to give it more of a, a, a fa like a flat finish to it. So this is not, it doesn't come across, doesn't present as, as like cloth. It presents as like soft plastic. I did a full video on this over at alltfl.com. Yeah. Hate the yoke. Not a fan oh, the yoke is, as a How pilot, drive like I can tell you it's unsafe. Yeah, That I is agree. totally unsafe. I can't, you can't do this, dude. No, you can't. You can't do that. So you can't look cool like Roman or Nathan. You can't, you can't be a baller with the yoke. All right, here we are. Okay. The new Prius. And I would say the star of the show. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, when when two of the industry's leading designers point this out yeah. as being, you Oh, know, so you saw Ralph's, Ralph's post. I did not, but what did he so say? So Ralph Scheel, yeah. uh, chief designer of Stilotnis, he he's very active on Instagram. He actually put a profile picture of this in yellow from the uh, Japanese uh, intro, and he actually he congratulated Toyota designers on this and said it was beautiful. And then all the comments are like, "Is this a joke? Is this like April Fool's Day?" And in reality, it isn't. This is a good-looking car. I can't believe I'm telling so you. So space-wise, it's got the same amount of space as a previous generation. Yep. This is the fifth generation, yep. and it's the first time that a Prius has been. I'm going to use the S word, sexy. That's stylish, good, sleek. You pick your. I'll S give word. you stylish, sexy. I can't give you. All right. But all right. okay, I will see. I, I'll, I'll, I'll point out one too. thing. I'll point out one thing that Roman says it's sexy. Or why he says it's sexy? Notice the A pillar. That's that. That's the windshield. Look at the rake of the windshield. That comes directly from at least that angle from an Uracan. And then look at the overall wait, daylight. Wait, did opening. you just say Uracan? Uracan. Did yeah. you really say Uracan? I said Uracan. Oh my God, dude! It's Huracan. Uraka. Uh oh, come on. Who makes the car? Uh, what do you what call, country what do you, does it come from? What, what do you call the SUV? Uh, Urus. Oh, no, Urus. Urus. <laughs> Urus sounds terrible. It does sound terrible. Do you want to go to the urinal in your Urus? 
Come Uris. on, Roman. Uris. Actually, on. how do you guys pronounce Uris? Uris or Uris? Uris. Yeah. Urukan. So let, let, let's, well, well, we're looking at this woman's ass. I know. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to now. show you the daylight opening. I'm that trying not, to have a discussion about design, and instead we're showing you porn. No. Oh, God. Okay, so notice the daylight opening. That's, that, that's the side glass. Yes. Notice it's like, it's this oddball shape. But what they've done is they've lowered it. So now there's less daylight opening to the slab side of the car. And by doing that, they've lowered the coefficient of drag, which brings the fuel efficiency up to about 60 mpg. 57 officially? That's pretty good. That's really good. And this will be available starting next year. So it's yes. coming. Now, yeah. the one that won't be available right away is that is the one. the plug-in, yeah. It, it, that's the prime, Almost right? 40 miles of, 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 pure, of electric pure electric range. range which, yeah. in reality, this is this is the good, This is the solution for today's infrastructure. Yes, I agree. You and I could get in this thing, yeah. drive it from here to Vegas, and go and have cigars all we want. Not that you smoke cigars. I know. It's you and Nathan. Me and Nathan. Yeah. yeah. So you've got one, one over here, and, and then, then one over on there. The other side. And yeah. then noticing some of the packaging is interesting. Look, they put the door handle. They hide it in the daylight opening. This is the kind of stuff you don't see on a Toyota Prius. And I was chatting with the chief of design actually, and met him yesterday for to Toyota. And we were talking about this and he's like, I asked him point blank, the, the designs have been changing, what changed? And he said, the guy's name that's on the door, actually he gets involved in the design now. In he says yes or no. You mean Toyota. Toyota. Yeah, not yes. Toyota, Mr. Toyota. That's why I said the guy's name yeah. on the door. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, you know, he, he, a few years ago, he, he said we need to bring passion and you know, luxury and romance and all the things that, that yeah. people strive for in cars. He back said in that, the, yeah. and that's like, that's what the PR people want to tell you. But in reality, like Roman and myself have presented God knows how many videos to you guys over the past two years of new Toyota product. And what's really happening is not just, hey, inject passion. It's the man goes into the design studio and says, I don't like the way that looks. Or they actually had a, a, a proposal for this car and it was too boring, and Akio Toyota said, no, you need to get it to be more aggressive. So it's not just him telling you an edict, he actually gets involved in the process. Yeah, you know, I actually owned a third generation Prius. You do? No, I did. Oh, okay. When gas prices went through the roof. Are we um, going over here to Ionic? Yeah, you want to use this one? You want yeah. to go look? So this, this, this is the Ionic 6, which yeah. was uh, unveiled in Korea a few years ago, but this is the first North American uh, showing of it. Uh, it's an interesting design, isn't it? It's, it's a little uh, bit interesting is probably the nicest way to put it. It's a little bit kind of like uh, Porsche and a little bit Infinity, old Infinity. Remember the old Infinity? Okay, so Porsche, uh, you need to get your eyes checked. But I was going to say Infinity J30. All right, yeah. This is an Infinity J30 in the back. It's got a little droopy. Roman's getting old. Oh, for God's sake. He's got to get his eyes checked. <laughs> Um, this is why we say Infinity J30. Yes. This droopy nose, and then they've inc they've put this biplane type rear spoiler here, and the idea this is all about coefficient of drag. This car ha is made to look this way because they were striving for a 0.24 coefficient of drag, which gets the range in the two-wheel drive model 340 miles. Yeah, so this is basically built on the same chassis as the Ionic 5, but because Hyundai is just killing it, they didn't sit on their laurels. They increase the efficiency of the motors, they increase the efficiency yep. of the software, yep. so this actually gets better range, yep. better fuel economy, EV economy than the Ionic 5. So, okay, let me ask you a question. Yes. What do you think of the Ionic 5? Uh, you know, I just drove it across country. I, me and Nathan actually, spent 46, you are an expert, aren't you? 46 hours and 46 minutes driving it from here uh, all the way to Orlando. Uh, and it's a very comfortable car. Um, the suspension needs a little bit more ref refinement. A lot more uh, refinement. But uh, it's very big. The one thing that surprised us the most was it's got an official range of like 250, but when you're cross countrying it, you really only get like 150 because you never charge 200. Yeah. And then you, and you never go below 20. Right. And if you're doing 75 miles, you're really at like 150 miles of effective range. Yeah. Yeah. Given those you know parameters. So let me give you some insight. I had the opportunity to drive the EV6 GT. Yes. So 586 horsepower. But yeah, it's fast. It's what you expect it to be. But more importantly, it has adjustable dampers. Hmm. And those adjustable dampers clean up all the composure problems you're talking about. And that's going to make it to the Ionic 5N. Um, which is coming soon. Which is, yeah, I don't know when, but I, I saw the EV6 it. GT is going to hit the market first. Yeah. So let's talk, let's talk about the inside of this. Two things I want to point out. Well, you were talking about this, right? So yeah, so this, in the, in the KDM version, the Korean domestic car, 
they put a, uh, a camera here, and that is the rear view mirror because it's legal in that market. But instead of completely redesigning the dash, they just put these wings up here, which I think looks so strange. Yeah, you wonder if you don't know why they're there, it's a question. That's why. And then the second thing I find so fascinating, something you and I haven't seen in a long time, the window switches are in the center console, like an old BMW. Or and I love this. <laughs> like you literally, it's just your, your hand falls right here and it's just more control, which gives them the opportunity to be more playful with the design. And look at this speaker grill here. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's nice. So basically it's got the same interior dimensions as an Ionic. Five, but a little bit less headroom because yeah. it's obviously it's much sleeker. But you're not you're not you're not in love with the design, huh? So this car is in the running for World Car of the Year, World Electric Car of the Year. Yeah. So I just got the opportunity to drive this at our World Car test drives. Um, a little bit more composed, even even with a static damper. Have, have you talked with Aldous Simon, the designer? Yes. And uh, you know you know he, he talks about pixels, right? Yep. So pixels are yep. are basically the theme. the theme here. So you'll see him in all of his designs. Yeah. So shall we go and look at yeah, some of the other ones over here? Let's continue. Let's definitely continue. I, let's ask, what do you guys think of the design of this thing? Yeah, it's, I think Should it's they have stayed with the theme of the Ionic 5, meaning more squared, and given up some efficiency of coefficient of drag, or, they sh or was that the right way to go? Um, the, you said the N something other was here? Uh, N74, N74, I believe. N74, let's the go check that out. The one that blew me away, this is their hydrogen-powered electric Look, car. it's Nathan's new car. Yes, yes, Nathan. Congratulations, Nathan. Nathan he just bought the uh, Santa Cruz, uh, and uh, he actually drove it for the first time this week. I haven't his talked to wife, him. His wife drove it before him. <laughs> she did, yeah. He, he was, was with pissed. Me. He was with me cannonballing across the country. Um, for, it, so, correct me if I'm wrong, it's his first new car he's, he's owned in like 20 years? Yeah, he new doesn't car. buy new cars. He doesn't buy, yeah, he's a cheapskate like me. All right, so once Ladies again. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ionic Cole. Six. The, the Craig famous Cole. Craig Cole. Famous Craig Cole. We're just doing a walk around. Like you used to, you and Joe, do you remember? Remember the days? Yeah, we copied. Now it's me and Motorman. <laughs> we're taking over <laughs> and we're not giving it back. <laughs> so I think Roman can talk more about this than I can. Yeah, this just blew me away. So this I, is I went stunning. to Korea like a few months ago and I was at their test track and this car comes flying out and I went, what the is that? It was yeah. that stunning, right? Yeah. Uh, and this is a hydrogen powered electric car uh, that uh, basically uh, goes back to the pony concept. I don't know if you remember that, but back, yeah, Pixels, back in the day, Hyundai had a pony concept yep. car that yep. was a sports coupe. Yep. Uh, and then the designer of the pony, which was, what's his name, Gio? Yeah, then also did the DeLorean. Yep. And he said that he actually kind of cribbed the pony for the DeLorean. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of DeLorean in this. And a little bit of uh, bringing this full circle, the, if you look at the Ionic 5, the reason why I like it so much, yes. it's a takeoff on the Lancia Delta Integrale, really? yeah. as well as the 74 Golf, which was also done by Jigaro. Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, this is uh, kind of going back to the heritage of the brand. And if they build it, I'm going to be really, really happy. Yeah, I think they should. Yeah. But then, anyway, what do we know? We're freaks. <laughs> You yeah. know, we, we buy cars that are not practical at all. Well, should we keep walking? Uh, do you want to talk about VinFast? Yeah, let's go talk about VinFast. Okay. I, I know nothing about VinFast except that they've invited a bunch of journalists. Uh, like to, five different trips? On, yeah, to yeah. go basically for a week. On a boondoggle. On a boondoggle and spend 10 minutes driving the car. That's all I know about it. Okay. And that may sound like jealousy, which it probably is. Well, this is, a, this is where Roman and I are a bit different than other folks. We approach our, our, our independent media companies as a business, which means time is money. And do you want to waste time on things that you don't think are going to be come to life? So this is a Vietnamese car company yeah. that is now uh, trying to sell cars here in America. They were best known for basically building uh, rebadged versions of BMWs. Of BMWs. And, and now they so, decided to build their own But cars. it's not just uh, a car company. It's a, it's a conglomerate, a Vietnam, Vietnamese conglomerate, and they've basically bought their way into the car world by buying other designs and buying other rights to manufacturing of different cars. And this is really their first attempt at bringing their own car to market, and they're coming to the U.S. market. So what do you think of it? Push-button transmission. I think this is a fool's errand. 
It could be. I, I am. And here's why. I'm going to tell you a couple reasons. Number yeah. one, nice their batter, do you want to share their battery strategy with folks? Well, they changed that. So their initial battery strategy was kind of goofy. They, they did something that Peugeot tried to do, which is they would Peugeot sell you the car and then lease you the battery. Yep. And what ended up happening with Peugeot was it became such a nightmare to keep track of who was buying cars and who yeah. was leasing batteries that they eventually wrote it off. It just didn't work. And their battery lease, when they first came out with it, was crazy. It was like 100 miles and $300 a month. Yeah. Some, some like some like you know unconceivable number for yeah. America. Yeah. It felt like they didn't understand our market. Yeah. Um, so let's let's so, show them the two cars. So, so that, that experiment, Renault, uh, they brought that to the Israeli market. Yep. And I forgot the name of that company, but it was a startup and ultimately didn't work out. So that was, that was my biggest issue, one of my big issues with VinFast. Come on over here to the smaller car. The other issue is this. We're at a point now where if you have, I'll this make it up, 30, 30 to $50,000 to buy a car. Let's just make up the number, 30 to $50,000 cars. To buy, 30 to $50,000 to buy a car. You keep talking about Are you walk going rides. to buy a brand you've never heard of? Some or people Or are might. you going to buy, but no, there's really no technology player. You'll buy a Lucid, you'll buy a, a Rivian because you're, A, you got a lot of money, and B, you, you like bleeding edge technology, and C, you understand that founder's ethos. The people that felt like RJ and, and, and Elon Musk, they've got the Steve Jobs aura to them. This is a conglomerate that was in logistics. They wanted to get into the car business, and now there's so many other better vehicles out there. Why? And it's not even priced cheaply. Like when Hyundai first came to the market, it was $6,000. Yeah, they followed, they followed the Japanese model. But, but to be fair, Hyundai's also a giant conglomerate, no, right? The Japanese, built, when they came to the market, they were cheap. Right, they're saying Hyundai, Hyundai followed that same. And Hyundai, well, but these guys aren't, these guys doing, aren't doing that, no. They're, they're coming in very high. They're coming in high with subpar product. I personally see this falling flat on its face. So we'll see. You know, I remember, and I've been doing this probably too long, but I remember being in Detroit when, you know, uh, we sold 10 million units instead of 16. So we sold yeah. 10 million cars. This was like in the early 2009, 2010, yeah. right? And there were all these Japanese, I mean, all these Chinese car companies there. Great Wall was there. Yeah. BYD, Build Your Own Dreams, yep. right? None of them except for Koda actually yeah. came. And Koda, of course, crashed. Koda, they, yeah. they, they imploded. And I, I personally think these guys will implode. And not from a function of, Let's will they, will they lose money? Yeah. You know, they got plenty of money behind them. At least that's what I'm told they got a lot of money behind yeah, them. Yeah, apparently the, the man who owns this owns resorts and all kinds of As different... As I said, huge conglomerate, yeah. but I just don't see the... Like, I don't like see seven. the, the like path to being a successful car manufacturer because you look at it, there's nothing special about the design here. And if you th think about this against a Hyundai Ionic 5, you're gonna buy this or a Hyundai Ionic 5? So they opened up their first dealership here in LA. So they're, they're we'll selling, see, they're man. trying like, to sell again, cars. Just look across the way to Chevy over there. Look at how much prettier that Blazer EV is. Mm. It's a, that's a good looking car. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't seem convinced by that. No, I, I, I just, I don't wanna count people out. I wanna give them a chance, but uh, you know, uh, the, the, the reality of the situation is um, there's initially... There's nothing, there's no breakthrough design here. Like, it, there's nothing well, that, that unique is, here. This is a la Tesla, right? The center yeah. screen, the push button transmission does not impress. Um, if you want if you want a knockoff, there are better knockoffs. Yeah. All right, well, let's go look at let's the Seltos. Yeah, the Seltos. Because yeah. that just was say. just unveiled. It's a mild refresh, but I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like. We can talk about the uh, Kia EV6 GT while we're over there, too. Yeah, Because that's a fun it? car. Oh, look at that. Mayada san brought the Cosmos. Yeah. That car lives in the let, let, basement let, let, of design let me at zoom uh, down there. Irvine. Isn't that thing stunning? There it is right there. That is <laughs> me, me liking. Yeah, yeah. Those are now very expensive. Very expensive. Very expensive, yeah. And they drive like a Ford Thunderbird. So uh, obviously what makes it unique is the rotary engine. So here we have the Kia uh, GT. This and is the EV6 GT and this is the refreshed Seltos. Yeah, so let's, let's, have you seen this before? This is my first time. This is my it. first time seeing it as well. Yeah. So let's I read up a little bit on it. The grill has been changed. The light signature in the rear has been changed. They've changed a little bit of the dashboard. So now you know how we've driven the new, um, uh, the, the Nero yeah. as well as the Sportage, how they've got that one screen now, they've done the same thing here. So I did a little bit of research because I was like, people don't really, I don't want to get in a shot, people really don't buy or know the Saltos, but I was surprised. You know, this is the fifth most popular car in its segment. Take a look at the screen, show them the screen, that's changed. Oh yeah, they've gone yeah. with that more traditional length and screen. 
They've changed the HVAC system as well, but notice they've actually kept hard buttons and knobs, thankfully. Yeah. Because sadly, in the EV6 GT and the Sportage, they've used that haptic feedback thing, which is not as safe. No. And then they've changed this here. This, it's tied in with the light signature of the Telluride. They've got another journalist doing a walk around. I think this actually may be for Kia. Oh, okay. Yeah, this well, is the kind of deal here. So let's go over here, we won't get in his way. Yeah, I don't want to get in his way. There's, yeah. That's See, Roman cool. and I try to I like be the color. Do you like the color? I love the color. It's, it's okay. Cool. It's know, very this, 70s, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of these kind of pastels have come back. It's like blue or gray or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Speaking of pastels, look at that blue that's on the Telluride over there. That's what they had at the drive. I sh that's the one I shot in my episode. I actually love that color. And it you can get like a terracotta interior with it. Really good combination. And speaking of your episode, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, on YouTube, Facebook, Apple, Google, um, Amazon, you name it. Hey, but easiest keep, YouTube. Let's keep going. We got a little bit more time. Uh, okay. I wanted to make this a little bit longer. Let's let's walk down this way uh, and see what, if there's anything we missed at Chevy. So obviously we've got the Bolt, the Bolt, the Bolt EUV, right? Uh, I don't know they, what's going on. I don't know about you in Denver, but here in LA, yeah. they got acres of these things on a the lot. There's no supply chain shortage with these things. Well, the, the, down, the downside LA. is, and I think it's changing, but it only charges at 50 kilowatts, which is oh, really slow. Really Imagine slow. if you're like road tripping. That's yeah. going to be a, a, an hour and a half to fully charge it. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the. Uh, this new is attractive. Equinox, you like it? This, I, I'm shocked how good looking that is. Like, it's the first time I'm seeing it in person. That is a good looking vehicle. How about the Blazer? What do you think of the Blazer? Um, of also, course, good the looking. Silverado EV, we've done a lot with that. So I'll tell you, can I show you my favorite car here? Yeah, I'll, show me I'll your favorite car. Come Z06? With me. Please tell me it's a Z06. It's, well, that is my favorite car, but yeah. my favorite real car that people buy. I will show you right now because... If it's the Blazer, I'm going to leave. No, it's not the Blazer. It's, it's right here. And you can tell it's important to them because it's at the front of their display. So this is the Trax. And you know what makes this unique? Can you guess? I have no idea. So it has a 1.2 liter. Three cylinder? Uh, three cylinder, puts out about 137 horsepower. Yeah. But get this, it starts at 21,000. Wow. That starts at 21. That one is the active, so that is the top of the line. So they're doing the, the Maverick thing. Yeah, basically, yeah. But 21,000 in a day when car prices have gone up on average, what? Uh, well, the average transaction price now is about 50,000 US. Before yeah. the virus, it was 36. 21 will be available middle of next year. That's there, surprisingly good looking. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked how good looking it is. It is. It's good looking and it's affordable. Was that uh, done in the, uh, the the old Daewoo studio? It's actually built in Korea. Very yeah, good. It's, it's yeah, it's Daewoo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you nailed it and you yeah. didn't know. Yeah. This man knows his cars. I'm an idiot savant of this kind of uh, let's stuff. Go look at, let's go look I at I actually the... like the refresh they did here. Yeah, what do you think? They uh, made it look completely different even though it's really just a refresh. So, you know, what they did here, of course, with the new Colorado is they put one engine choice, right, a 2.7 liter, yeah. a four-cylinder turbo, one body style. Yeah. So you get the four-door crew cab. Yeah. Uh, and this is the one that, of course, Andre is lusting after, uh, the ZR2, I believe this is called the Desert Boss. So this pretty cool. pretty cool looking. How's yeah. the inside? Yeah. The problem I've had with GM, and I, I, just so a little disclaimer, I'm a major GM freak. People know that about me. Yes. The thing I got a problem with on GM cars is that the tactile feel and the design of the interior not good. Some it's chintzy, very right, cheap. Right, right there, you have. Yeah, this is hard crap. This for is for not the good. top of the line, you know, Colorado. Well, what does this thing cost? Gosh, I don't know if they've announced pricing. Andre would know. Yeah. But it's it's probably looking at close to 50k, maybe That's more. 60k probably for, for this 50k. This you should more. either redo this for all the cars or have a covering there. Any questions, guys? Let How much does this what? cost? It's gonna start at 28 and then go into. But what does this one cost? Yeah, well, it's not out yet. Okay, so, so we don't have the exact. So we I think, think it's expensive. Around 55. Okay, yeah, 55. Okay. So and you've got really great suspension. You know the multi. Oh, is this the Fox? Oh, multi. No, multi oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna give you a little fun fact here about the Multimatic system. Yes. So these are the same people that are building the AMG One. They built the Ford GT. So the Ford GT is not an American car. Technically, it was a Canadian car. Yeah, it's built in this, Canada. People don't know this that. This damper system comes from racing cars, and it's on a off-road pickup truck. So they've patented it, and they actually now distribute it and put it in everything from this pickup truck to the coming Lotus, uh, what is it, what's that Lotus? The, 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 one uh, the with electric the, one, you mean? Not the electric one, the AMG, and the, oh, dude, I, see, I'm I not a Lotus I, guy anymore. I, I am not a Lotus guy. Let's go see. Emira, Emira. Yeah, let's Amira. go look at the Corvette. It's hiding. 
It's funny that they, that they put it way in the back here. Our Corvette, it's because it's California. Our Corvette finally starting to reach like demand and supply equilibrium, or are they still not, not there? Uh, they're still in still, demand, yeah. but the market is readjusting. Like will, for, will the Camaro survive? How much? Sadly, it hasn't. They already pulled the plug Walking on dead, it. Walking dead, huh? Yeah, I, went to, I was Driving recently dead. in Oshawa this summer. Yeah. I went to a car show in downtown Oshawa. Yeah. It was a beautiful, sunshiny day, like 70 degrees, and it was the most depressing car show I've ever been to. Mm. And it's unfortunate, and I think it was just people are pissed that they're not making that car here anymore. I'm kind of jonesing for one now that they've said they're not going to build it anymore. Well, you know, the one to get is the one LE. Yeah. Get a manual 1LE well, and put it in the garage. All right, well, there we uh, have the So a little market intel on these. Yeah. I've got a buddy of mine. Um, let's just say he's... Um, these can go up to 167, I believe, if you... MSRP. MSRP, yeah. yeah. If, MSRP. if you spec them all the way to the top. So these are these are magnificent. Uh, this, you know, Roman's done video. Actually, did one for me when I was in the hospital. Thank you for that. Um, these are interesting, as well as the Porsche market's interesting. Uh, I've got some friends who have allocations on these. They got them at MSRP, but I'm seeing them going as high as 50 over sticker. But then interesting, on the Porsche side of the, of the fence, everything was going 25 over sticker for a base car, and then as high as 80,000 over sticker for a GT3 RS. Now we're starting to see some of that come down. Now, like in Midwestern dealerships, they're selling 911s for sticker at this point. Really? Can you yep. get a 911? I don't know if you can even get a 911. Can you? For sticker, you can get a base 911. And by the way, the one car that's not in this hall, which we're covering on a all TFL, is the new 911 Dakar. Dakar. Which is, yeah, which is the, the off-road E. That is. I love it. I mean, I've, you gotta love it. And I think what that it is is Porsche seeing how much money to be made in the custom market between the Singers and the Gunther works of the world. And they said, well, why don't we put that back on the table for us? And they came out with a car. The question to me, and this is, you know, maybe this is a good question to turn around to the audience. Roman and I both agree that there's enough of a market of GT buyers that will pay $250,000, $300,000 for a GT3 RS, but is there enough of a market for them to also buy an off-road 911? And if they do, what would they do with it? So the off-road 911s, really only 2,500 of them, the Dakar, and it starts at 223. This tops out at 167, I think, if you check all yeah. the bells and whistles. Uh, so you just got the carbon wheels. You're, you're $50,000 less if you're not talking about dealer allocations and markups, yeah. right? Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, there's a, and it's got more horsepower. Uh, but wanna, this is a different thing. Yeah, so it's the, a different car the, and a different buyer. What's the Dakar? How many horsepower? Is it 500? No, it's probably 400. It's, yeah, it's not the GT3. It's a 3 liter. Yeah, it's a 3 liter. It's a 3 liter, yeah, so, so it's, it's like 4 something. Liter. This is 600 plus, yeah. if I remember right. But a totally different buyer yeah, for this I kind agree. of car. All right, well, let's, let's, let's get out of here. We've got, uh, let's start, where, let's finish where we started by okay. Genesis. Genesis? Yeah, let's go over there. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this walk around. Uh, this I was gotta fun. I got to tell you, the one that I'm super impressed with is the ID Buzz. I actually think uh, it's really cool. I really love, uh, actually, I love the Ionic 6. Uh, and but those Genesis. I don't love the Onyx Six as much as I love the Onyx Five. Yeah. And I am not a crossover SUV guy. But the, those Genesis uh, convertibles are just spectacular. You know, you, 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 like I said, once upon a time that was where Bentley would have been or where, where Aston would have been. I now, think they're they're moving at an unusually strong pace. Genesis in particular. If you look at what they've been doing over the past couple of years, now there's a certain cachet to the brand which didn't exist before. Yeah. I still think they have a, uh, a bridge to cross, and I don't think they're going to get the Lexus guy to come over here. I think this is the guy who was oh, going to buy oh. a top market Camry. Hey, I'm glad you said that because there's this Lexus here we completely forgot about. It's the new RX, the all electric. Lexus. Oh, yeah. Let's it's go here. check it out. Yeah, let's go check it out because yeah. it's, it's supposed to be here. So, uh, if you guys don't know, there's you an all electric. You were steamrolling me, and I'm a Lexus owner. This is yeah, unacceptable. Exactly. Well, here's the RX. So this is the 500 at H. Yeah, so this has got the same what do you think of this color? hybrid. I, I love this color. It's a cool color, I isn't it? I think it's a super. It's not quite a copper, but it's not like a gold. It's, it's, there's a bronze to it. It's you know, stunning. You know, it's the best. I was listening to a podcast, actually Consumer Reports, and they said it looks like a nail polish. It does. That's a nail polish. You're dating color. the wrong kind of girls. <laughs> All right, where's, where's yeah. it? Look at the Wait, purple you're one. You're dating Dude. women that are like featured on Law & Order SVU. Uh, no, no, it was a pod. I'm married. I'm not dating anybody. It was a podcast. <laughs> Maybe your Consumer son. Reports. Look at the purple. Oh, my God. Oh, on a Lexus. 
Yeah, I don't love that. I don't love it. I don't love the wheels. I don't love but it. But it looks no. like aftermarket. Yeah, that's aftermarket. I don't so know. That's those be a are Ray's engineering wheels. That's, that's aftermarket. That's got to be a wrap. So where where is the electric RX? This oh, yeah. Is it here? Oh, we just blew past. Right we we'll just blew past. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Yep. Here so we are. here the we go. RZ. So this is the RZ. They showed us. They showed this car to us at the Toyota Palooza event yep. that they do every year in June. They had it on stage for like three minutes and they dragged it off stage. So what this is is the RX platform and they've turned it into a fully electric vehicle. So 312 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 5.2, uh, all-wheel drive, 70.1 uh, kilowatt hour battery, which is pretty small. That is pretty small, That's yeah. pretty small for a big vehicle. Yeah, to give you an idea, most cars in this range are like 90 kilowatt hours. I, I think you're looking at about 200 miles, well, 200, 225 miles yeah. of range, which is not, you know. Not great. Not great. And then the weird thing about this one, which it'll be available eventually, Toyota oh, won't use this for Oh, this has got the, the yoke again. They'll call it steer by wire. But the first year of production, they're going to do a regular steering wheel, and then you can get this. And what Toyota says, Motorman, is that it's adaptive. So, you know, if you need to make a sharp turn, you just yeah, turn the wheel. Yeah, they've given us that. But again, I don't trust it. As someone who has three racing licenses and flies an airplane, that is totally unsafe. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I, can I just point out? Look at the beautiful infrared LC500 convertible. I know why you say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that is, for all you people out there who want the best looking convertible in the world. In the world. I'm going to go with that one right absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially in that color combination. Especially in that color combination. combination. It is just absolutely yeah. stunning. And there might be one for sale at some point. Maybe. We know. Somebody might be selling one. <laughs> <laughs> so take a look at the way the daylight opening changes in this car. So in the, notice the daylight opening over there on the regular RX. Yep. Here they've opened it up a bit to make it look like it's glass all the way around, even though that's not glass, that's plastic. And then they've changed the architecture here where they've built in somewhat of a spoiler to clean up the way the air goes it, around It must the car. be built on the BZ4X chassis, right? It is built on the yeah. BZ4X. Yeah, yeah, the Toyota chassis. Yeah. Yep. Well, anyway, guys, there you have it, your uh, walk around of uh, the auto show. I'm going to put the camera here and I'm going to say... Moto Man, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This was super fun. No, you were you were incredible. I'm I'm stunned at your car knowledge, and I appreciate that you I shared it with me. I always enjoy working with you. It's super fun. Anyway, guys, uh, remember go to all TFL if you want to see some of these videos, and uh, let's uh, let's end. No, I don't like that. I don't no. know that one. LS, let's end on the LS. Why not? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, that's a cool car. Or the TRD off-road Toyota. Yeah, I mean, given the choice, I get the TRD. Yeah. But but this is a cool car too. <laughs> this is a very cool car. What's going what on is there? that? I don't know. Let's find out. There's something going on here. Is that a, a plug-in hybrid? This is... Or is that a design feature? I don't know what the hell it is. Three it's a design feature. Liter. It must have the same... that's a hybrid. It must have the same powertrain as yeah, a Tundra. Is... 500 horsepower. Look at us. They drive. stumped us. Yeah. I think that's just a design feature. It's got to be some sort of, like, function for... The for the autonomy, that, that's what it has to Cameras be. Cameras or something, It's yeah. got, because it, it, it is a sensor of some sort. All right, see you guys next time. Okay. Ciao.